Kyola, good morning everyone, Richard Wong here, welcome back to the channel. Today we are looking at the new TT Artisan 10mm f2 lens. This is a lens designed for APS-C cameras with a fast f2 maximum aperture. This lens is available for the Sony E, Fujifilm X, Nikon Z, Canon RF and also Micro Four Thirds as well. While TT Artisan has released a few fisheye lenses in the past, this 10mm lens is the widest retinilinear lens from TT Artisan and that gives you 105 degrees field of view or 15mm equivalent focal length when used with most APS-C cameras or 20mm equivalent focal length on a Micro Four Thirds camera. The price of this lens is only 159 US dollar, so it is one of the cheapest fast ultra wide angle lens in the market. A quick disclaimer before we start, TT Artisan sent me the lens sample I used in this review. Actually, they have sent me two samples and I'll explain why in a second. But this is not a sponsored video, so what I'm going to say is completely my fault and my honest opinions. While TT Artisan has released quite a few autofocus lenses recently, this 10mm lens is a completely mechanical, manual focus lens with no electronic contacts or features. It seems TT Artisan's strategy is to develop both autofocus and manual focus lenses at the same time, depending on what is more suitable. Just like the other manual focus lenses from TT Artisan, this lens has a very solid metal construction. Pretty much the whole body is made of metal, including the rear lens mount, the front lens cap. Oh, actually, this lens comes with two front lens cap. One is a metal one that you screw onto the metal filter holder, and one is a rubber one that you can just use it if you don't want to use the filter holder. If you use the filter holder, that will allow you to attach 72mm filter to the front of the lens. So I said the construction of this lens is solid, and this time I have actually tested. But how? Well, the first day I took this lens out to take some photo, I made a mistake. I didn't mount the lens onto the camera securely. So when I took the camera out from the camera bag, the lens just dropped from my hand onto a solid concrete floor. I still remember seeing the lens fall down from my hand in slow motion and it hit the floor and it bounced a few times. I was like, oh crap, I haven't even started the review and I already destroyed the lens. But when I picked up the lens, I noticed Apart from quite a few dents on the lens, mostly on the front filter holder and a few smaller ones on the body, the glasses seems not damaged at all. I think I was just very lucky the filter holder protected the lens. Nothing seems broken and nothing is losing inside the lens as well. I shot some test photo and I didn't see anything unusual. So, the lens survived the drop from about 1.5 meter or about 5 feet onto a super solid concrete floor. So later that day, I have to message TT Artisan and told them about my CD accident. I told them the lens seems to be perfectly fine apart from a few dents on the body. They offered to send me another sample and I agreed because while I think the accident didn't damage the lens. I also don't want to risk give you guys incorrect test results just because of my CD accident that might have affected the image quality a little bit. So the test results that I'm going to share with you were shot using the second sample I received from TT Artisan. But I did some comparison of the photos shot using the first lens sample and the second sample and I didn't really see any difference. But anyway, what I can say is, firstly, the build quality of this lens is good and it can take a bit of punishment. Secondly, use the provided lens filter holder even if you are not going to use a filter, as it gives you a bit of extra physical protection. And last but not least, always check and make sure you mount the lens securely onto the camera so you won't make the same silly mistake like me. Okay, let's go back and talk about the lens a bit more. 
The aperture ring is near the lens mount. It has clicks and it is two clicks per stop from maximum aperture f2 all the way to the minimum aperture f16. Most of the affordable mechanical lenses in the market have a variable clicks per stop design. What I mean is, those lenses usually have two clicks per stop when it's near the maximum aperture, but then halfway it would change to one click per stop. So if you don't look at the lens and just changing the aperture, you may not know whether one click equals to half stop or one stop of aperture value. But with this TT Addison lens, it is always half stop per click. The main focus ring is pretty smooth and the focus flow is approximately 90 degrees. It is not a weatherproof lens and there's no weather seal at all. But with such a large front element and without any deep lens hood, you can't really use it on a rainy day anyway as the raindrop will cover the front element very quickly. The weight of this lens is around 340 gram or so. While I won't say it is very heavy, it is still a bit heavier than the average APS-C lenses in the market. Now let's look at the image quality and we'll start with the image sharpness first. If you look at the center of this photo shot at f2 with the 40 megapixel Fuji X-H2, the center is slightly soft, sharpness improved noticeably at f2.8 and at f4 the center becomes very sharp. The center sharpness remains the same until we reach f11 when diffraction starting to soften up the image a bit. And if we look at the corner, at f2, the corner is quite soft. Stopping down the lens will gradually improve the corner sharpness, but we have to stop down to f8 and the corner sharpness becomes decent. We have the best corner sharpness at f11. The minimum focus distance for this TT Artisan lens is 25 cm or just less than 10 inches. Sharpness at f2 when shooting at minimum focus distance is acceptable. Sharpness would improve gradually as you stop down the lens. For an ultra wide angle lens, Bokeh is usually not important at all as you can't really dissolve the background. With this TT Artisan lens, it is also the same. Even though the lens has a fast f2 maximum aperture, but unless you are shooting at the minimum focus distance, you can't really dissolve the background too much. But if you do that, the background does look pretty nice. However, I still think bokeh doesn't really matter for a lens like this. Let's have a look at vignetting now. At maximum aperture f2, there is a bit of vignetting, it is not terrible, but you can see it. Stop down the lens to f2.8 and f4, the vignetting will improve a bit, but there doesn't seem to be much improvement from f4 onwards. There's still a small amount of vignetting, but probably not a problem when you're taking real world photos. This TT Allison 10mm f2 lens has very decent chromatic aberration control. When I'm going through the photos that are shot with this lens, I don't really see much chromatic aberration at all, even when I look at some of the really high contrast photos. Ultra wide angle lenses would quite often have quite a lot of distortion. And these days, a lot of lenses would just rely on software correction to fix that. With this TT Artisan lens, since it has no electronic contacts, the camera cannot apply distortion correction for you when you are taking photos. But if you look at this photo, I think the amount of distortion is still very acceptable. And if I apply a plus 8 distortion correction in Lightroom, and it would get rid of most of the visible distortion from my photo. For wide angle lenses, lens flare performance is very important because the lens usually has an extruded front element which makes it easier to flare and you can't have a deep lens hood to help you minimize lens flare. So I was a bit worried because a lot of the TT Artisan lenses that I reviewed previously, they have pretty average lens flare performance, but fortunately, the lens flare performance of this TT Artisan 10mm lens is pretty decent. 
even when I'm shooting into the sun, the amount of lens flare is usually at pretty minimal level. And the worst I could get would be some lens flare like this. But this is like the most extreme case. And even with this extreme example, contrast remains at pretty acceptable level. Next, let's have a look at the sun stars. With this TT Addison lens, you only need to stop down to f2.8 and you can already have some reasonably sharp 8 points sun stars. Stop down the lens slightly further to f4 and the sun stars become super sharp and long. So this is a great lens if you want to have some nice simple 8 points sun stars in your photos or videos. And let's have a look at focus briefing now. When changing focus between 1 meter and infinity, there is virtually no focus briefing at all. Even when I change the focus to really close distance, to 0 0.5 meter or even minimum focus distance, there is only very small amount of focus briefing. This lens has probably the smallest amount of focus briefing among all the lenses I've tested over the last year. $159 is really not a lot of money for a 10mm lens with f2 maximum aperture. And I think TD Addison has delivered a pretty decent lens that definitely worth $159. I really like the solid build quality and as I've explained earlier in this video, I've even tested myself and it passed the test. Image quality is pretty good, very good lens flare control, beautiful sun stars, minimal chromatic aberration, image sharpness could be a little bit better at f2, so if you want very good sharpness, you will probably shoot at f4 or f5.6. But at least there is a f2 aperture that you could use when you are not too worried about having maximum sharpness. For example, if I use it to shoot some wide angle portrait photos, I would be perfectly happy to shoot it at f2. But if I use this lens to shoot landscape photos, then I would probably shoot at f4 or f5.6, not just to get sharper image, but just help me to get a bit more depth of field to cover both the foreground and background. So this TD Artisan 10mm f2 lens is not a perfect lens. I would be lying if I say it is perfect, but I think it is really good enough for most usage. And for only $159, you are getting a lot of value from this ultra wide angle lens.